Hi everyone, Rachel from North Brisbane Psychologists. Today I wanted to speak a little bit about the concept and experience of human needs, of our uh, universal human needs, that is the qualities of our life which we all share, whether we live in Brisbane or New York or a little village in Africa, there are certain things that all human beings need both to survive, the basic needs that we think of in terms of food, shelter, safety, nutrition, sleep, um, oxygen, and then the, the things that we need in order to thrive. Whenever I'm talking to clients um, or workshop participants about their needs, um, we usually run into a few sort of roadblocks in a discussion of our human needs. Uh, and I think this is because, and what I mean by roadblocks is sometimes people say, well, why would you call um, sexual expression a need? Or why would you call um, inspiration a need? Like there's some things that are nice to have, but we don't need them. And when I look at the list or the different lists of universal human needs that I have that I regularly share with people, and I'm looking at one now, there are words on here like sexual connection, um, communication, inspiration, discovery, uh, self-responsibility, effectiveness, participation, um, as well as words like trust, rest, acceptance. There's a lot of words we have in English to express our needs. And another word for needs is values. To me, the word value is synonymous with needs. Because for example, I can say I have a need for authenticity or I value authenticity. I have a need for support or I value support. So they're pretty much the same thing as far as I'm concerned. And, um, you know, there are many needs that perhaps we're living without. Perhaps we would love more support and we don't have it. Or perhaps we love more opportunities for creativity, innovation, inspiration, collaboration in our lives. Perhaps we love more self-efficacy, self-esteem, a sense of mastery. Perhaps we love inclusion and a sense of belonging in the community and we don't have that. And here's how I see needs. To me, our needs are a bit like... Uh, nutrients in food. You know, there are some nutrients that we, we have to have food to survive. They say, what, you can live for three weeks without food. Um, and at some point, you actually need it to survive. And then there are certain um, there's things like proteins and certain vitamins that you'll quickly um, become sick and languish if you don't get them. And then there are other nutrients in foods like, I don't know, B12 or, or zinc, which, you know, perhaps you can live quite a long time without them. But at some point without those nutrients in your system, you will, you will languish in some way. Your body will be um, not as fit and healthy as it could be otherwise. So there are some needs, psychological needs, that we can live without for a while. But eventually, if they're not met or satisfied, we will languish. And when they are met, we notice that we flourish. So in therapy, when we receive from our therapist empathy, understanding, acceptance, and support. You know, many people enjoy the process of therapy because it meets those fairly core needs. Or if we join a group, like some of my clients are in 12-step programs like AA, and if they have a good experience, their need for community and acceptance and understanding um, are being supported. And so they do better in their mental and sometimes physical health. So I wanted to, you know, make it clear that um, there are some needs which are daily needs and some needs which, you know, we can live without uh, being satisfied for a while. But eventually, you know, we, we all share these needs um, and we can categorize our needs. Uh, and I'll give you some of the categories now. You can see if you relate to them. We just have our basic well-being and sustenance needs, exercise, nourishment, sleep, shelter, uh, we have safety and security needs. So to some degree, we all like comfort and safety and predictability and order and stability and protection. We have our needs for rest and recreation and fun. So we all kind of want play and relaxation and a bit of space and a bit of peace. 
We have uh, love and connection needs, companionship, uh, feeling like we matter, to be nurtured and to give nurturance, respect, affection and warmth. We all need these to some degree, understanding and empathy. And then we all have a need to feel a sense of belonging and community and inclusion and interdependence with other humans, which builds a sense of trust and support. We have needs for choice and autonomy. So um, we like to feel a sense of our own freedom to make our own choices and empowerment. Um, honesty might come in there. And then play needs, I've mentioned those. Creativity needs. Most of us want to have an adventure from time to time, feel inspired, be spontaneous. Um, and then we all have a need for meaning and a sense of contribution. So, you know, to be productive, to achieve things, to be effective in the world, to grow, to learn, to participate, and to get a sense of purpose and self-esteem from that. So as you can see, there are different classes of needs, and it's really worth reflecting on our needs, because in my experience, uh, it's a bold statement, but everything comes down to our needs, and all human behavior is an attempt to try and meet our needs. So even when we behave tragically, say aggressively or um avoidance for example these are still attempts for human beings to meet a need to be heard to be seen or to protect themselves and be safe in the case of avoidance the tricky thing is that what we did when we were younger to try and stay safe or to try and be seen or to meet some other need to be included um, to be loved cared for to be protected um, the strategies earlier in life that that we used, that kind of sort of worked, perhaps they no longer work for us. So um, having a really good understanding of our universal human needs um, can do a lot of things for us. First of all, we connect in ourselves with the beauty of these needs, these inherently positive qualities that make us humans and not computers. Um, you know, we're tribal creatures. Uh, we have this sort of complex set of needs and to be able to put them into words is helpful both for connecting with ourselves and feeling our needs, you know. So our needs are not just an intellectual idea, which can be a trap because if we talk about them, we can come to an understanding um, in our heads about them. And yet our needs are something that need to be felt. And even in English, we see... Um, that people say things like, I feel unappreciated, I feel unsupported. So there's clues there that our need is for appreciation or support. So we feel pain of some kind when our needs are not being supported or satisfied. But when I help people to connect with their needs, a couple of things happen. First, they may feel some sadness. There may be some grief at recognizing their own unmet needs and that may go way back into early life and that grieving is an important process because grief brings us towards acceptance of what is and from that place of acceptance then we are more capable of being able to think in an open and creative way about how might I express my needs to people who could perhaps listen or who I trust or who could help me and what could I do about getting my needs met if I really get clear that I have a need for belonging and community? Perhaps I have options to explore. You know, perhaps I can reach out and I can join a group like a 12-step program or a meetup group or something, you know, to, to make connections with people. If I'm burnt out, perhaps I can really deeply connect with my need for rest and space and relaxation. And the key is to really connect with this need in, in a way that you feel uh, that you, you really value and, and need this. It's a full body experience when we connect with our needs. Um, and, you know, in that fully felt bodily experience of our own needs, we can have compassion for ourselves. And in that compassion for ourselves, for our own suffering, we come to more acceptance we come to an acceptance of our own needs because many of us grew up being taught that our needs didn't matter or in the extreme that we don't even have needs. So some people are martyrs. They say, I don't need anything. I don't need anyone. It's simply not true. We're human. We need each other um, and we need a sense of connection and belonging and meaning. 
So there's almost a spirituality to this, to understanding that our needs, as my, one of my mentors so beautifully expresses it, he says that our needs are the doorway to our soul or our spirit. Um, it's our life force, our life energy. So without a connection to our own needs, we, we, we can't begin to talk about them even to ourselves, let alone to others, and we, we can't take actions that will be supportive of our needs. And like not getting enough B12, or zinc or something, we, we will languish, our mental health will suffer. So many of the therapies that I do, um, like schema therapy and acceptance and commitment therapy, they keep bringing us back over and over again to what do I want? What do I need? What matters most? What do I value? And in processing our past, in order to make sense of our own story, we might need to go back and think, well, what did I need at that time when I was 9 or 15 or 21? What did I really need that I didn't experience? You know, And just making sense of our own needs can be super powerful. So um, oh, I think I've spoken for longer than I intended. Um, that's my little spiel about needs as the manifestation of our life force. To me, they're like instruments in the orchestra. One can be playing a solo or multiple needs can be, you know, all playing together, coming up in my experience um, in harmony with one another. I will post in the um, in this uh, post or in the comments below a, a list of universal human needs. And this can be a very useful resource when you're struggling or feeling something uncomfortable to sit with the list and ask yourself, what am I needing in this situation that I'm not getting? And even that's a really good start because even knowing that you can begin to have a different conversation with yourself and others. That's not about blame or criticism or judgment, but is simply about expressing your needs. So we call this needs based communication. The workshops um, and retreats that I'm running are very heavily focused on connecting with understanding and finding ways to express our needs. So needs-based communication. If this is something that interests you, keep an eye on our events page on our website for upcoming um, events, including our Facebook Lives, which we do every weekend. And we're doing another one um, soon. Normally Sundays at five, we go live and we're always talking about this needs-based consciousness and needs-based awareness. So um, I'd love to hear in the comments below your experience of not knowing what you need and, and what that is like for you. And then when you figure out what you need, um, what, what's worked for you in terms of supporting your own needs. So um, I hope that's been helpful. And until next time, bye for now.